not since the tradition of stag dose the night before a wedding have preparations for a big day gone quite so spectacularly wrong. Never mind the fact that Newcastle have lost for the first time at home this season, that Liverpool have closed the gap on them to six points with a game in hand and that their defending was as coherent as said groom after his bachelor party bender. Rather, it is the loss of goalkeeper Nick Pope for next Sunday's EFL Cup final with Manchester United that will be felt the keenest. He will be elsewhere, presumably tied to a lamppost wearing red L plates. For it was the rookiest of errors that has denied him a place at Wembley, a straight red card after misjudging a through ball and handling deliberately outside of his penalty area. It is cruel on Pope, who has been magnificent this season. But not to worry. Newcastle have Martin Duberbaka, who came on here and did not concede, and Carl Darlow as backup. Except, Dubrovka is cup-tied. Ironically, he only gets a winner's medal if Man United are victorious, the club he represented during a lone spell earlier this season. Darlow, meanwhile, is on loan at Hull, step forward, or, more likely, shuffle sheepishly from the shadows, Loris Karius. Should he start in the final, as is expected, it will be almost two years to the day since his last competitive appearance for Union Berlin. Oh, and his last outing for an English club? That would be the Champions League final with Liverpool in 2018. It was there, in Kiev, that he was at fault for two Real Madrid goals in a 3-1 defeat. Jurgen Klopp did not play him ever again. Liverpool's forwards were on fire as Jurgen Klopp's side moved to within six points of the top four with victory at St. James Park. Darwin Nunez opened the scoring with an emphatic finish past a helpless Nick Pope in the Newcastle goal just 10 minutes in Cody Gakpo grabbed his second goal in as many games for Liverpool after a sumptuous assist from strike partner Mohamed Salah but if the German lost all faith in Karius, then he is slowly regaining it in his current charges. They were devastating during a 12-minute period in the first half that brought two goals and forced Pope's dismissal. It should be noted that Newcastle started like the proverbial house on fire, only to end up with their fingers well and truly burnt. Alan St. Maximin, in his last audition before the cup final, had done more in 10 minutes than the previous two matches combined. Match facts and player ratings Newcastle 11, 4 3, 3, Pope 3, Trippia 4.5, Murphy 64, 5. 5, Shar 4.5, Botman 6, Burn 6, Longstaff 5.5, Joel Linton 5.5, Ritchie 71, Anderson 5, Dubrovka 24, 7, Almiron 5. 5, Gordon 64, 6, Isak 6, Wilson 64, 5, St. Maximin 7 subs, Dummett, Lassels, Lewis, Mankio Liverpool 11, 4, 3, 3, Allison 7, Alexander Arnold 7, Gomez 7, Van Dyke 7, Robertson 7, Henderson 7, Elliot 60, 6, Fabinho 7, Bajsetic 7. 5, Milner 60, 6, Salah 7.5, Gakpo 7, Hoda 60, 6, Nunez 8, Firmino 60, 5.5, Subs, Kelleher, Keita, Tsimikas, Matip, Phillips Ref, Anthony Taylor 7 at, TBC. Mom, Nunez less than, add, https colon slash slash mads dot daily mail dot co dot uk slash v8 slash us slash sport slash football slash article slash other slash empu underscore fact box. HTML, it equals MPU underscore factbox underscore one to advertisement indeed, Miguel Almiron should have scored on four minutes when played clear by St. Maximin.
The Paraguayan, though, did not look like the player who is into double figures already this season. His touch was heavy and his finish soft, allowing Allison to smother, but it felt like the sort of big game Newcastle needed to focus minds ahead of the cup final. Then, uncharacteristically, they switched off. You could have driven the open top bus Newcastle have on standby through the middle of their defense when, on 12 minutes, Trent Alexander-Arnold dropped a ball over the top. Kieran Trippier and Fabian Schaar exchanged panicked looks before switching sight to Darwin Nunez. Or, at least, the number on his back. Nunez was clear and, after two touches to steady himself, buried low beyond Pope. The Uruguayan was a menace during his hour on the pitch and was only withdrawn with an eye on Real Madrid in the last 16 of the Champions League on Tuesday. The nature of Liverpool's second goal, on 17 minutes, will also do wonders for confidence ahead of that tie. Fabinho found Mo Salah and he produced a sand wedge to lift over Newcastle's dozy backline for Cody Gakpo, who needed only a putter to convert from close range. Given Eddie Howe's side had not scored twice in the league since Boxing Day, this felt like game over even before Pope's indiscretion. That came in the 22nd minute when Allison did his fellow keeper no favors with a low half volley downfield, asking all sorts of questions as it skidded behind the defense, caught napping once again. Pope did not have the answers and, as he stooped to head clear, he duly lost his head and handled. Newcastle goalkeeper Nick Pope was shown a straight red card for handling the ball outside of his area as Salah closed him down Newcastle's number one goalkeeper will now be suspended for the Carabao Cup final against Manchester United next week Martin Dubrovka, who replaced Pope, was called into action on a few occasions. He will not be able to play in the Carabao Cup final as he is cup-tied Newcastle stop goal scorer Miguel Almiron was denied in the opening minutes by Liverpool's Allison, but the Magpies failed to score substitute Callum Wilson had the chance to pull a goal back for Newcastle but he was denied by Allison, who made a smart save Diogo Hoda had the opportunity to score a third for Liverpool late on but spurned a great chance by heading wide of Dubrovka both sets of fans paid their respects to former Newcastle player Christian Otz who died in the Turkey and Syria earthquake it said much that referee Anthony Taylor, despite the red card and VAR checks on both of Liverpool's goals, was not booed off at half-time. He and his team had got every call spot on, one gripe, and this is probably not the fault of Taylor. But the planned minute's silence for former Newcastle winger Christian Atsu was overtaken by applause before the referee had sounded his whistle. A silence is always more impactful, especially for someone so young. Atsu was just 31 when losing his life in the earthquakes in Turkey this week. This game also marked commemorations for what would have been Sir Bobby Robson's 90th birthday. He was the manager the last time Newcastle played at Wembley, a 2-1 FA Cup semi-final defeat in 2000. Everything, until recent weeks, had pointed at Newcastle under Howe finally bringing closure to more than half a century since their last trophy. But nights like this are harmful. Maybe it is they are destined to be the bridesmaid once more. Oh, <laughs>